All right, guys, third and final connection that we have on our motors would be the combination or the compound DC motor. So it's going to have the combination of the series and the shunt windings. So we're, we've built these guys up slowly over the past two videos. In we did the armature and the series in series with each other to create the series motor. And the labels on these guys were S1, S2, A1, and a2 and we arbitrarily put them to a positive and negative polarity here and we looked to see which direction that motor was actually spinning it was key to look at which direction that motor was spinning so that when we brought in the shunt winding we make sure that the series and the shunt uh, were rotating in the same direction so the next motor that we looked at was the shunt motor and the shunt had the shunt and the armature here, negating this series winding here. And again, with just the armature and just the shunt, we were looking at the direction of rotation. If the direction of rotation was the same, then we know that the windings, magnetic fields on the series and the shunt were identical, and then we could do the compound DC motor. The correct name for this guy is the cumulative or additive and again compound is just basically the combination so this is our cumulative compound DC motor or it's additive in that the two magnetic fields are going in the same direction the series winding and the shunt winding I'm doing those arrows to denote our instantaneous uh, magnetic polarities, they're both going in the same direction or they're going to add together. Okay, the other one, if you screw this up, is the differential and we'll cover that in the next video. But let's start off just with the, the cumulative compound. Now if we go back to that slide that we had our field poles on, uh, we can see here that on the outside we have the shunt. So this guy right here is our shunt winding. We know it's the shunt winding because it has a smaller gauge of wire and a lot of turns. And then this winding right here is the series. So as I draw the next uh, thing with the field poles and then the armature in the inside, uh, the field poles are corresponding to these field poles right here. And I'm going to draw the shunt on the outside and then the series on the inside. So the shunt was on the outside and the series was on the inside. So we have our field poles here. Okay, and our shunt comes up, gets wound around a whole whack of times, uh, and then comes over and goes on the outside as well, gets wound around in the exact same number of turns, and comes out for us to hook up and our labels on the shunt were F1 and F2. Our series was on the inside. So our series comes up, gets wound around fewer times because it has a higher gauge of wire, comes over, then gets wound around the same number of turns, comes out for us to hook up. So those are our two field poles. And on the inside, we always have the armatures. The armature is the, the spinning portion of the motor. And the armature has all these conductors or bars on the outside. And in order to get current to flow on those guys, we have the commutator segments that correspond to each of those conductors. And then touching those commutator segments are our brushes. And those guys come out for our final connections, A1 and A2. Beauty. So now we're going to make use of all of the field poles. Uh, deucing up these guys will create a north pole here and a south pole here. And then juicing up the armature will also create a relative north and south pole on the inside. We're going to have repulsion and attraction, and that's what's going to give us rotation of this machine. Okay, let's put in our polarity here for our source. 
Okay, so we got our positive here, our negative down here, and it looks like the positive is first going to go to F1. So I'm going to do a connection between F1 and the positive side of my source, and that takes care of this guy. Then from there, I'm going to, let's see, I'm just going to jump over to S1. So S1 will be done if I just have a jumper that goes over to S1. From S2, I have a jumper to A1. So from S2 to A1. And then A2 and F2 both reference uh, the same polarity. And then we just need to bring our source polarity there. So I'm going to bring my other side of the source over to F2. Right, so that corresponds from here to here. And I'm going to put a jumper over to my A2 connection. Beautiful. And that is all our connections for the cumulative compound DC motor. It is essential, and I'll mention again when I go back in the lab, it's essential that the series and the shunt have the exact same magnetic polarity. Otherwise, some funky things happen, which will be covered uh, in the next video. All right, guys, let's go to the lab and see how to hook this guy up. Okay, so now that we've gotten our head around uh, the series and the shunt, and we've looked at the direction of rotation of each of them, Remember that we had to look at the direction of rotation of uh, the, both the series and the shunt so that when we make this compound motor, we make sure that both of the windings magnetic fields for the series and the shunt are going in the same direction. We want to be additive or creating a cumulative compound DC motor. In order to do that, we're going to take the positive, we're going to feed that into our series winding. We're going to jumper from the series winding S2 over to A1. Okay. Then we're going to provide a return back to the source here on A2. So that's our series motor. Okay. In addition to that, we're going to have the shunt in parallel with both the series and the armature. So the shunt is essentially going to be right across the source. F2 is going to go to my negative. And because I put S1 to the positive, you can see S1 is to the positive, then F1 is also going to go to the positive. That's crucial for a cumulative compound motor. Okay, let's take a look and see how this guy sounds. Beautiful. It sounds almost exactly the same as the shunt motor. Right? Keeps a good speed. Now this has both the series and the shunt, so it, has, it should have decent speed regulation. Um, because it has the series, it should be able to deal with um, any increased torque applications as well. It's kind of the best of both worlds. If you want to have really good speed control though, it's best to have just a shunt DC motor. 